Well, hello and welcome again to the MCAT Club. This is a special bonus call uh, for all of you guys who are uh, thinking about and struggling with the MCAT, and especially with regard to MCAT Verbal. My name is Don Osborne, and I am the host of the MCAT Club. So in case you haven't heard before, the MCAT Club is the place to go for up-to-date information about studying for the MCAT, MCAT prep, and I even answer your MCAT-related questions live here on the call. Today, I'm very excited to be inviting back my special guest, Leonardo Rademile of the Cambridge Learning Center. Hi, Leo. How are you? Good to be with you, Don. Thanks very much for taking the time. Um, I know we're going to probably do maybe a three-part video series today. So this is part one of a three-part video sequence uh, that you've been nice enough to let me record with you uh, for MCAT Club members. So I really want to acknowledge you and thank you very, very much for doing that. I really appreciate it. Happy to do it. So uh, today what I want to start with is, can you just give me like a 30 second um, breakdown of exactly what is the Cambridge Learning Center? Sure. Uh, the Cambridge Learning Center started as a field education project and research project at Harvard. Mm -hmm. We then spun off as an independent foundation, although we do keep uh, very close relationships with the university. And our primary focus is increasing verbal skills mm -hmm. and reducing test anxiety. And we do a lot of work in languages and literature, cognitive psychology, and neuroscience. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Huh. That's very, very cool. Okay, so um, you know, let's get right into it and specifically talk about verbal reasoning and critical thinking. Uh, as you know, you know, we're either in uh, the revised MCAT or just about to be into the revised MCAT. And so right. I can see it, I'm sure you do as well, that uh, these kind of um, tools are only gonna become more and more important um, as the MCAT continues to evolve. So right. let's start a little bit with uh, perhaps uh, rhetoric. What would, you, what would you say about the importance of understanding the process of rhetoric relative to a standardized test like the MCAT. Sure. Well, in any critical reading test, you're going to have a number of components that you really have to master. Mm -hmm. Rhetoric being among them. There's grammar, rhetoric, reflective intelligence, questions and answers, and, and, and what we know about cognitive psychology that can improve performance. Okay. Rhetoric is the ability to really pick out what the argument is in an essay, mm -hmm. to know what the main point that the author is going to make. You know, what's the big idea that holds everything together? Mm -hmm. Once you know that, you've got a key to understanding the entire essay. Mm -hmm. Having mastered that in the thesis or first paragraph, mm -hmm. rhetoric then allows you to pick out the key sentences, where the key ideas are. Because you may have a text of 750 to 1,000 words, but there's only really 12 to 15 key ideas, and that's where 80% of the questions come from. Mm -hmm. So knowing the argument and then identifying the key sentences is really the key to knowing what, what the argument is so you can really figure out what the questions and answers are asking for. Okay, so if I'm a, a science-oriented applicant, uh, you know, in my major, maybe I'm biology or chemistry major, you know, I really haven't <clears throat> had to filter too much uh, right. and, you know, rank, uh, you know, there's like in the table of elements, there's not really like one more important element than another. Right. You know, no element has like a tone of voice or, you know, there's no style differences. So can you give me a little bit hint about what you mean about like understanding these elements that you're talking about relative to rhetoric? Sure. Uh, the, the interesting thing about it is it's a whole different domain of learning. Mm -hmm. When students study science, they're focused on details and formulas. Yeah. With regard to uh, critical reading, mm -hmm. it's a very, very different type of reasoning. Okay. It involves seeing the relationship between key ideas, mm -hmm. how those things relate to each other, and what they suggest, what they imply, and, and what you can infer. Mm -hmm. Rather than focusing on details, it's getting those key ideas and reducing them to the essentials. Mm -hmm. And that's where grammar comes in. Okay. Once rhetoric allows you to see what the key sentences are, mm -hmm. grammar allows you to take a very long sentence, something as long as 60 or 70 words, mm -hmm. and reduce it down to a five-word concept mm -hmm. so that you have real clarity. And that allows you to get a a huge essay down to about 75 words of key ideas, which is really the key to understand. 
Awesome. So I'm putting you on the spot here, but could you give me an example sentence that could be distilled down to something simple? Sure. Uh, in, the, in the 19th century, the Congress of Vienna uh, formed in order to uh, make Europe a safer place. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, it's a pretty long sentence. Right. Congress of Vienna formed to make Europe safer. Yeah. That's it. And so you're just, you're pulling apart the pieces of the sentence, literally, yeah. in order to get to, you know, what I learned, which is the subject, just a very simple subject, the verb, and then the object or the action. Exactly. So subject, verb, complement, and then you've got a whole bunch of modifiers. Right. Okay. <laughs> and there are rules for figuring out which ones are relevant. The only ones that you include are the modifiers that limit or show cause and effect or have a, what we call a rhetorical cue in them. Awesome. And that's it. And it really allows you to simplify sentences. Awesome. Okay, got it. Uh, how does this relate to reflective intelligence? Uh, that's the key. Uh, remember, the first thing that you're going to do is identify the key sentences, mm -hmm. then reduce them. Okay. Now, reflective intelligence, folk, which is the most important part, focuses on what is the relationship of ideas? Uh -huh. How do they come together? How is the whole greater than the sum of its parts? Mm -hmm. Now, this is, I can't overemphasize how important it is, because one of the, the main reason that medical schools weigh the MCAT verbal higher than the other sections mm -hmm. is this is precisely the type of reasoning that a physician uses in differential diagnosis. Okay. So what they're really testing is not so much your ability to read, right. but your ability to understand relationships and make diagnoses. Mm -hmm. Because none of your pa patients, very few of your patients are going to come to you with textbook symptoms. Yeah. They're going to have symptoms, counterindications, and it's like watching a segment of House on TV. <laughs> you know, they put up all those things on the blackboard and, and they keep on looking. Well, what's the relationship? What are the underlying principles? That's the art of medicine as opposed to the science of medicine. And that's what they're really testing. I mean, even now there are MD medical schools in Canada uh -huh. that are only looking at the MCAT verbal mm -hmm. for admissions huh, and amazing. looking at science scores. McMaster and a couple of others are doing that. And it looks like they may, may even start doing that in the United States. Wow. Okay, got it. So, um, you know, uh, I want to talk some more about this. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps in another uh, video. Could we sure. come back and perhaps talk some more about neuroscience and cognitive psychology in another, another video? Sure. I'd really be grateful about that. And, um, you know, I know my audience is going to be interested in learning more about this. Um, so I think, uh, don't, don't you have like a, a way for people to get into uh, a free class that yeah, we offer, more about you? We usually offer a free class. It's usually on Tuesday evenings okay. uh, for an hour where we really go into depth on okay. everything that they need to know. So if they decide to study on their own, they'll have something that will really help them. Okay, so I'll put the link to that in the description below. Sure. And I'll try to also put it here uh, in the video itself. Uh, so that people can get get access to that. That's great. Leo, thanks very much for the time. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to talking to you in the next video. It's always video. good talking to you. All right.